Welcome to the breakdown on Latte Firm. Arsenal have signed US goalkeeper Matt Turner, and I'm joined by Javier De Sima, who was a former coach of Matt, uh, and I'm delighted to have you on. So, Javier, welcome to the firm. How are you? Good, very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. The pleasure's all mine. Um, Javier, just in case you haven't seen any of my videos, one of the common things that 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 is so true about me is that I, I've rarely seen players who join Arsenal play. I don't know anything about Matt, so I'm really delighted to have you on the show. I want to hear about um, his strengths, his weaknesses, his playing style, what you think Arsenal might sort of expect from him. But before we do that, uh, could you just give us an introduction to yourself and what you currently do? Sure. Um, uh, as of right now, I'm the current um, associate men's soccer coach at Fairfield University. Uh, my role is obviously overseeing the goalkeepers, but part of the role as well is uh, doing the recruiting, uh, picking up players, you know, looking for players to, to come uh, to the university, obviously get a degree, but also, you know, maybe have the opportunity to go on and play at the next level. And you've obviously got um, some stuff that you do away from the university. I know you're a co-founder of an academy. Do you want to tell us about that as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a goalkeeping specific uh, academy that's called Keeper Max. Um, we obviously develop goalkeepers at every level from youth uh, all the way to the college ranks. And we've been fortunate enough to send a couple of players, you know, I mean, to uh, the lower divisions of the MLS, you know, MLS pro now. Uh, and we had a kid also signed for Austin FC uh, as an MLS draftee. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get picked up, you know what I mean? But ended up uh, in Portland for the MLS side too now. So that's very cool. Uh, there'll be lots of people watching this video at some point, sort of similar to me, Javier, like just, you know, we don't know much about Matt Turner. Arsenal signed him a few weeks ago, a fee of, of around sort of 5.5 million pounds, rising to seven and a half million pounds, you know, depending on sort of success and appearances. What's your involvement with Matt? How did you get to know him? When did you first sort of meet him? Well, a funny story, you know, we, we obviously, a, it was an email that was sent out to the, the coaches here at Fairfield and we received plenty, you know, plenty of emails every day. We went through his profile um, and we looked at the video, obviously. Uh, he was already had been accepted here to Fairfield. Uh, and, you know, one of the things we saw, we're like, he, there's a kid that has potential, right? He's a diamond in the rough. He's not, uh, he's not there yet, but we ended up going to watch him play um, in a tournament where he, there were different levels, the different tiers to, to the levels at, at, you know, we went to the first tier, obviously one of the, the fields, you know, that he was playing on was in a great pitch. Um, he was in a lower tier. And again, the kid had something, you could see something in him. Um, he was lanky, he was athletic, he was quick. Um, he loved the big time save, you know, but again, he's technically, he was not there. Um, we invited him, actually, uh, give him a call, and we invited him to a clinic, um, an ID clinic that we usually have where prospects that want to come to the university end up and want to, you know, obviously maybe play for the team, uh, ended up coming here, did a, a fantastic job, you know, very, you know, very solid job in terms of what he was capable of doing. We knew that he had flaws uh, that we needed to work on if we would have to develop him. Uh, and we offered him a roster spot, you know, not thinking – what was you know ahead of you know this after these four years he was here so well i'm going to explore some of the strengths and weakness and and you know i'm going to put you on the spot and ask you for some sort of anecdotes of your time with him but just on screen now javier i just want to bring up some basic stats about matt turner similar to what i do on, on breakdowns on this channel uh, some basic information uh, we know that he's 28 years of age uh, he is a u.s international he's now got 18 caps to his name, and he's kept 13 clean sheets for his national country. He comes in at 1 meter 91, so just shy of six foot three, predominantly right footed, uh, lanky as you described him. Um, he's played 111 games for New England Revolution. Uh, he's conceded 146 times, and he's kept 24 clean sheets in that time. Some images that you can see uh, on your screen and, and everybody watching, he was a boyhood Arsenal fan. I mean, we've seen this before, Javier, with players like. Per Medesaka, Robin Van Persie, William Saliba, you know, pictures of these guys in their Arsenal jerseys, if I may use that word, um, when they were sort of younger. And you can see that first picture there. Uh, he's been caught sleeping and he's wearing an Arsenal shirt. I mean, did you know that about him when he when he joined the university? Did you know, was he, was he sort of, you know, outspoken and proud to be an Arsenal fan? 
Yeah, sure. He was, you know, I mean, actually it was, it's, you know, obviously we have a lot of English uh, players that we do uh, recruit over here. The, uh, our head coach is, is obviously uh, English and he's been here 28 years in the university. Uh, we bring players from, like I said, international players and uh, quite, quite a bit from England. Uh, and he was very outspoken, you know what I mean? Because the other guys are, you know, this United fans, this guys from all, you know, different kinds of uh, teams. And he was, he always, you know, was proud of, you know, representing the, the Arsenal uh, team. Uh, and, you know, there you go. There's a, there's a picture of him when he was younger, maybe dreaming about one day being in, in the shoes that he's in today, you know? That's it, yeah. I mean, that's actually the caption that, that's on that sort of image. But you can see the next picture there. He signed for Arsenal. He will be the number 30, uh, yeah. presumably brought in to be a squad player for now and, and ultimately competing to be the maybe the, num the future number one with Aaron Ramsdale. Um, you can see he's also got his US top on there in one of the pictures. He's established himself as firm competition to Zach Steffen uh, to take the US number one jersey. And of course, being an Arsenal fan, he refused to sign the Tottenham shirt that you can see in that bottom right <laughs> capture, uh, caption. What was yeah. he like... As a person, uh, Javier, uh, what was he, you know, was he, you know, you talk about some of his sort of physical traits, but was he attentive? Was he enthusiastic? What was he like? You know, was he cheeky? Just tell us a little bit about his personality. Yeah, sure. Matt was, uh, you know, obviously, and he still is, you know, I mean, to the day I just, I, it's funny because I just finished texting a few minutes ago with him. Um, he was very attentive, very respectful, very well spoken. Um when he goes into a room, you know, people feel attract, you know, a, a, not a physical attraction, but a just an attraction to him because he just makes things easy. You know, uh, he's very respectful. He wants to learn. Um, he's he's very humble. Um, and those are all things that people actually, you know. He you know, he brings people into, you know, his world in terms of that. And, and he's he's very easy going. So people do get attached to him quite, quite quickly. Um, so just a fantastic person overall. And that kind of ties in with the type of person that Mikel Arteta at Arsenal has been going for in the market. If you've been keeping a close eye on, on, on English football and the way that we operate last summer, this summer, we're going for players that have a point to prove that have maybe something to, um, you know, to, to sort of grab hold of it, of in terms of their career development. And Matt Turner kind of fits all of that. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about was his temperament. Um, he's had five yellows and a red card in his career. Is he quite a calming character at the back? That's one of the key traits to being a goalkeeper. Will he develop a good relationship with the back four or five? Yeah, I think I think that's that's very important, right? To to have that, you know. I mean, I think he does. He he, he doesn't. I, I believe like some of the you know the cards that he ended up getting were just you know maybe coming off his line and and you know at times maybe just slightly late or or so on. You know what I mean? But. Uh, I think he's going to be, you know, he's calm. He's uh, he, he will do well in those kind of terms and he will get along with everyone. You know, he's that kind of guy that will get along with everyone in the locker room. He's a great locker room kind of guy. Um, and again, people will, you know, be attracted to him in terms of that. You know what I mean? So I see that hopefully, you know, knock on wood, there won't be you know, any problems with any of the players. You know what I mean? Because he's that kind of guy that everybody gets along with. I'm looking forward to seeing him. In terms of his playing style, uh, you talked about him being, you know, lanky. He likes the big save. Uh, what what would you consider his strengths? Because reports that I read, and there are a few of them, they, that talk about his shot stopping skills as being his major sort of trait. Would you go along with that? Yeah, that that is correct. You know, ma you know, major leagues, he's a great shot stopper. Uh, to be quite honest, you know, he's he's quite good off his line. You know what I mean? Um, because of his height, his timing is quite good. Uh, but the shot stopping ability is, is, you know, his trademark, to be quite honest. And in terms of things that he you might think you might want to improve or develop in time, obviously 28 is quite a young age for a goalkeeper. What would you say would be his areas of not weakness, but just things that he might want to focus on over the next couple of years at Arsenal? He's been working quite a bit uh, and, uh, and, you know, he's improved tremendously uh, with his ability to play in and around, uh, you know, the back. So, you know, I would say that uh, he's he's improved that he he can play now with his feet. You, uh, you know, he can ping balls. He's very accurate. You know, what I mean, especially with his side volleys and and, and so on. Uh, he's improved that tremendously with both feet. To be quite honest, you know, I was well impressed at the, the development that he's had all through these years. You know, especially at New England uh, on that aspect of it. And then when he had to go to the national team, uh, Berhalter, you know, forced him to play. You know, that they try to play from the back and so on. So. He's developed that and he's in, you know, he wants to improve. He's one of the kind of kids that uh, every single time he wants to get better. He wants to improve. He's a sponge, you know what I mean? So 
I'm happy for him to be where he's at right now because he will improve. You know what I mean? He will definitely improve and he wants to improve. He's that kind of guy. I mean, that's really good to hear. And I suppose my next question was going to be, what's he like at taking instruction? You know, when you were coaching him, was he like the sponge that you sort of describe? Was he sort of proactive in, in sort of his own development? Did he listen to you? Were there challenges? What was he like coaching? He was, he was like I said, he was he was a fantastic kid because in terms, of, he took everything aboard. You know what I mean? He wanted to improve. He worked. He was a tireless worker nonstop. Um, at times, he would just do double sessions. You know what I mean? Without people, you know, asking him to do it, uh, he would stay afterwards. You know what I mean? Doing distribution on his own uh, with with the other goalkeepers, obviously, but on his own time. You know, he's gonna he's gonna bring that to the, to the table down there at Arsenal. I'm sure he's gonna stay behind. And, and do extra because that's his mindset and that's the way he is. He wants to get better. He only wants to compete and get better and uh, and you're going to get that off him. So. That really is so good to hear. I, I want to just talk about his distribution. I, I've dug up some heat maps of some of the league's top goalkeepers. So on your screen now, courtesy of SofaScore, you can see Edison's Premier League heat map at Manchester City last season, Alisson's uh, heat map at uh, Liverpool last season, Aaron Ramsdale, Arsenal's current number one, and of course, Matt Turner from the MLS last season. And uh, to be fair, the, the numbers are a bit skewed because he didn't have that many appearances in the league last season. But yeah. you can see clearly, very comfortable in his own box, doesn't like to venture out as much as perhaps those three goalkeepers. Is that, I mean, it, I suppose it further reinforces forces what you're saying that he's trying to become more confident more proactive on the ball would that be fair yeah yeah to be quite honest you know what i mean it's quite it's quite interesting because in new england you know he you know the conversations that we had with him you know he was saying that they they allow him to go a bit more direct uh you know passing not just kicking you know what i mean not just kicking into the space but to you know what i mean to the wingers and so on so it's it's quite interesting that he mapped there, but he is trying to get more comfortable. That's you know his he knows that and and he's working on it. So he's definitely going to continue to improve on that those areas. And what's he like in the air? You know, is he quite sort of commanding? Does he dominate? Does he is he aggressive in the sort of claim at corners and set pieces, or yeah. uh, is that an area for improvement? Yeah, I believe his his timing is quite you know it's pretty good. You know, what I mean to be quite honest, his timing has gone you know tremendous. You know better as as uh, you know you see more of it right it's like the more the more you see the more better experience you are uh, and I believe that he's you know he's very commanding in, in in the air coming off you know what I mean again the pace of the game might be a little bit faster in the EPL you know uh, and and it takes you know time to adjust with like everything uh, but I, I believe he you know he's he's one to be pretty good in the air as well you know in terms of that dealing with those balls from, especially from what areas and so on and just sort of closing in on, on the last couple of questions in terms of his personality. Look, he's played 111 games for, for New England Revolution. He's conceded quite a few times, although his penalty record is quite impressive. Nine saves from 20. What's he like from moments of adversity? Because obviously when you're a goalkeeper, you're the, you know, you're the last person between the, you know, the net and the pitch. And when a goal goes in, it's heartbreaking, right? As a goalkeeper, you want to keep a clean sheet. Often you can be at fault for for, for clangers that, that lead to goals. What's he like in those sort of moments? Is he has he got like incredible mental strength and positive mental attitude, or is he again sort of like mentally that's something that he wants to work on? Incredibly mentally strong, like that. Uh, he is one of that. You know, he's he went through adversity here at Fairfield. You know, actually his uh, his second year here, he had a, a mistake uh, where. I said, you know, at any college level that at that age, a goalkeeper maybe never plays again, you know what I mean? Because of, you know, the way that it was dealt with in the, in the media and, and on ESPN and everything. Um, but he came back stronger than ever. And, you know, the following year, he was the best goalkeeper in the nation in terms of, you know, clean sheets and and, uh, and safe percentages. So the mindset of him is, is second to none. You know, he's that kind of guy that will work, you know, has mental fortitude, you know, and you need that to play at the level that obviously he's, you know, at right now. You know what I mean? You have to maintain that and that's he, he has that. How good can he be, Javier? I mean, look, he's he's competing for the U.S. men's team number one's jersey with uh, Zach Steffen of Manchester City. Can he, you know, I think he won the Golden Glove at the, at the CONCACAF tournament. Um, yeah, I mean, how, what's his ceiling? Like, is he, are we looking at, you know, potentially a great goalkeeper? He's 28 with years ahead of him. Uh, where can he go? To, to be quite honest, you know, I sky's the limit because he hasn't reached his uh, his ceiling yet. You know I mean? That's a, that's a scary part. You know I mean? That he has not reached his ceiling. Every time he improves, every, you know, he improves 
areas of his game and the more experience he's going to get. You know, he, he started playing at 14. You know, you think about goalkeepers, you know, in my country, if you don't debut at 18 or 17, you know, it's 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 like, you know, you're not there. He, you know, he started playing football at, at 14 and, and he improved every year through, you know, obviously his youth and, and the co collegiate. And when he went to, on to the MLS, they gave him an opportunity and he worked and improved and improved. So now he's here. Let's see what he can do. But I'm sure that, uh, like I said, I don't think he's reached his ceiling. Um, and that's an opinion of mine. But uh, I think he has a lot to, to continue uh, to improve because he's able to do that. Last couple of questions that you'd be pleased to know. Um, did you ever think that he would ever play for Arsenal Football Club? Like, I know, I know you've got to be positive. I know you were his coach and you can take a lot of responsibility for how he sort of burst onto the scene. But did you really believe that he was going to play in the Premier League for such a massive club? Like, was that, was that your expectation? Was he, was he expecting it? I don't, I don't want to say no and I don't want to say yes. You know, I, I just want to, you know, say that the, the mindset that he has He's capable of doing anything. That's what, you know, I mean, I want to leave, you know, you with with that because some he puts things in his head and it's like he's willing to work for it. You know what I mean? So if you have that mindset, you can do anything in life. And I think he has that. And well, I know he has that. And uh, he's, he's, you know, I don't know what else can he can do after this, you know, but may it continue. No, absolutely. I mean, look, I'm excited. I think the expectation from from my side, being a fan who's not really known much about him, I want him to come in and compete with with Aaron Ramsdale for that number one shirt. May not happen in the short term, might have limited appearances in that first season. So that's going to be something that he just needs to adapt to. But from what I'm hearing, really strong shot stopper, mentally spot on, hungry, ambitious, determined, um, you know, the model professional, calm. Uh, will develop a good relationship with his defenders, obviously speaks the language. That's going to be a big bonus. You know, that's going to, you know, settling and acclimatizing is going to be useful. Um, can maybe improve with the ball at his feet and become more confident with the pace of the Premier League and just just needs more exposure to that. But certainly has all the right physical traits and certainly the right upbringing. And you mentioned that you, you're sort of in touch with him. What's he like away from football? Is he a sort of family man, quite humble? Like, do, do, you, do, you, you know, do you sort of text and call him regularly? Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know, I mean, sometimes uh, even like, you know, in major tournament, like the tournament that he had with the with the Gold Cup or any kind of game, I was actually was fortunate enough to be with him before he left to England uh, on the Sunday, the, the last appearance that they had the, the last goodbye for him at New England. I was up there with his family and so on, you know. So we do, you know, to be quite honest, I believe that we do have a good relationship, but he's the kind of person that you text him and he, two minutes later, he's texting you back. And I'm like, Matt. You have a hundred other things in, 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 you know, that you have to deal with, you know. So I've been fortunate enough, you know, to, to, you know, he gets back to you right away. He's, he's, he's always, uh, always asking how, you know, how we are doing, or you know, always trying to keep in touch with that. Um, you know, he's a busy, he's a busy man. You know, he's a father now, as you know. Um, and as soon as he got down there, he was, you know, he's, he's on a plane to Germany. So he's been, you know, he's been, but like I said, you know, fortunate enough to, to to text with him and, 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 you know, hear his voice. And, and, and so fortunate about that. He's, he's just so humble and he's just such a nice person, you know, as well. Ah, oh, that's so lovely. Well, well, there you have it, boys and girls watching. Uh, there is uh, some really deep insight into Matt Turner, what we can expect, his playing strengths and style, what areas of improvement. Javier, your insight has been insightful. It's been enjoyable. I've been, I've hung on your every word and I'm really looking forward to seeing how we sort of developed at Arsenal. And, and of course, you know, I'm sure he'll invite you to a special seat at the Emirates when, you know, when you can come and watch him play. So Maya, thank you for your insight and your time. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching, please do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let me know in the comments below as to what you think Matt Turner might do here at Arsenal. And of course, breaking news tonight, Bernd Leno apparently has agreed terms with Fulham Football Club and Arsenal looking to recoup about 10 to 11 million pounds in terms of transfer fee. Javier, thank you very much for your time. Best wishes for you with the future. And if you're in London, give us a shout and enjoy, enjoy you know, the, the, the summer period. Thanks very much for coming well, on. Dude. Thank you for having me. Take thank care. you, Javier. Take care. Bye-bye.